perhaps unlike you, Tony, uh, my cryptic crossword fever was was caught in a much more uh, dignified manner. Waking up and seeing a house get together at a cafe and do a crossword. And so basically I had to I had to show them what's what. Yeah. I had to come out with something. And so uh, over weeks, months, I got better and better and so mine my fever was sexually transmitted, undoubtedly. Oh, I've passed it on. I may have acquired it uh, with a reasonable degree of purity, but uh, no, I've passed it on like a dirty little slut. Uh, so when we started our blog devoted to DA's crosswords, we just naturally started using our initials. So I'm RC. And, and I'm AS. Cryptic crosswords by their nature require explanation even when you solve it. You could have all the words down and not actually understand what's going on. And that's basically the reason for DA Trippers, is to get explanations, to figure out why the answer is what it was. No, so, because, because the well, clues are so creative. Remember the turn thing, the turning the tables? Incredible. The fact that somebody could come up with that. And then there's the other ones like Noel. Noel is... Oh. It was a Christmas crossword one year. Mind-blowingly good. Mind-blowingly good. DA is a very creative guy. Like, he's he's a genius. He's one of some of his crosswords are works of staggering genius. My name is David Astle. I'm a crypto cruciverbalist, which is a very fancy term for a cryptic crossword maker. Uh, I am known as DA. Uh, Famously or infamously, depending upon your point of view, in the Age and the Sydney Morning Herald. Uh, I'm also the dictionary guy on SBS's Letters and Numbers. I can inveigle strangers and delight and confound, and there's more where they come from. I'm thinking of seven by seven. One, One two, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Now I'm going to make a pattern. So already I can see when I was okay, uh, just 13 in high school, I created a crossword just for a relief teacher who threw us the gauntlet and said, can you create a crossword? I did in 40 minutes, symmetrical, with clues, quick clues. And he was so impressed or beholden that he created a duplicate of that crossword and handed it around to everyone in the school. So that was, that was a galvanizing moment. That gave me a real buzz. And Salieri tobacco, and, uh, tobacco. tobacco. So tobacco, where's the next problem? Maybe so tobacco. The easiest way of saying it is that my preoccupation as a boy became my occupation as a man. It was just always something I was driven to do. And to ask why did I choose to become a crossword maker, the best way of answering that question is to, is to put me in a tube, do an MRI scan of my brain and point out the hippocampus, which would be some kind of twisted piece of muscle inside the you know in the brain and say that's why yeah as if choice was ever part of the equation it slays your Siberia we know that's got to be so there passant which is a third passing or passing. Passing. I'm gonna get the passant which is the weakest entry because it's the more obscure but word. then again it's all about using as much as passive vocab vocab. As common tobacco and account that's a mini version of what I do sometimes when you get out some of these clues like, it's astonishing and it you just have to talk about it to people who truly understand and that's why you need the DA troopers to say oh my god and at the same time when there's a bad clue and the rules have been broken it's so galling that you just have to get online and thunder about it. Okay well Ben Cousins has got Ness in its name N-E-S-S so can I create an adjective with those other uh, six letters. Yes, you can actually. Boun bounciness. Actually, it is an anagram of bounciness, Ben Cousins, and that's because you have recognized the cluster. Uh, powdered bottom, which is a favorite of mine. It's a six letter answer, and the answer is ground because uh, powdered, like powdered coffee, is ground, and the bottom of something is the ground of something. But I hope that I can, you know, excite the solver and take them to places they haven't been before. That's for me the thrill of being a libertarian setter. There's this uh, band of uh, devotees who are basically looking at my stuff every week and I was flattered and I was also a little bit uh, intimidated because straight away they categorized clues into gold and bullshit and thought here you know is a kind of um, regular focus group uh, fighting the good fight for crosswords. 
No, it's quite funny actually. It's weird meeting DA and talking to him, and, and in recent uh, year or so, occasionally seeing him on TV. I think everyone had an idea of DA because his his clues are so difficult and kind of twisted and contorted and just and creative, ridiculously creative. You build up this gnarled idea in your head of who he is as well. So you think of him as this kind of skinny, gnarled, yeah. crotchety <laughs> old man who takes out his bitterness on the crossword. A lot of people had. Um, misguided ideas on who I was, including female, including elderly, including a Grinch living on top of the mountain who was antisocial. But when they find out that I'm a genial, you know, middle-aged, uh, you know, father of two who likes a drink and a chat, then some of them are a little disappointed. He must get that bitterness all out of him uh, <laughs> in the crossword and the rest of the time he seems like a lovely guy. I do uh, love the people who attempt my crosswords and I'm thrilled when they're thrilled. So there is this um, symbiotic relationship. As for uh, letters, I've had, um, you know, the whole spectrum. You know, I've had people who have um, pretty much directed me to the gap and told me how to jump off. Um, you know, I've had Christmas cards with a, you know, a beautiful fir tree on the front and then it told me where I should stick the fir tree. And I thought that would be particularly painful because it wouldn't be easy to, you know, pull out you want like one of those Amazonian umbrella fish. Um, but then I've had really, uh, you know, just uh, warm and uh, affectionate letters saying, you know, love your work, keep doing what you're doing, don't listen to the critics or, um, you know, whatever they say, I'm, I'm a rusted on fan. Sometimes you're naughty, sometimes you stray, but you always, you know, give me delight. Oh, I do tread this, you know, high wire between love and hate. But you can also say that love and hate are both passionate and that someone who's a hater is an anagram of heart and that solvers anagrammatically are lovers. So if I'm provoking a reaction of fury or of uh, euphoria, they're good reactions because they're, um, they're passionate.